Welcome back, everyone, to Puntos Fathom Hobbies. This is Season 2, Episode 6 of Tainted Grail. We're playing the Fall of Avalon. Uh, we're going to be starting on Day 7. So last round, Round 5, we, we played uh, Days 5 and 6. We have um, Bayor and Maggot. Uh, they are down on the Forlorn Swords. They were able to pick up an item, um, the Old Steel Smasher. Uh, but our men here is ticking down, and uh, I also forgot to reveal these two cards here last turn, so let me reveal those right now. Um, those would be uh, 108, and I guess it's just 108 on that one side, so the other side doesn't have a card actually, so let me find that card. It's the Grubwood. Let's move that. So maybe we'll go to the Grubwood, and then we'll make our way up to the top again. We'll, we'll, we'll round around that way. Um, before we do, quick shout-out to this channel sponsor, Pontos Fathom Press. Um, we got the Cat 2 Journals out of Lovecraft's Providence Omnibus Edition. Go check out our bookstore. This is how we support the channel. If you like the content we're producing, uh, you can go check this out. Collecting uh, six volumes of the... A Cat 2 Journal Saga, including the Necromancy of Nyarlathotep. You can buy each volume individually as well. Uh, we've also got William Mitchell's Alchemy and Anthroposophy in the Dune Saga, looking at those origins of Frank Herbert's Dune and pinpointing those, th those features of Jungian alchemy and even the works of Samuel Butler that really bring out what people love about the Dune Saga. Finally, we've got our podcast series. If you go check out our other channel, um, you can actually see a lot of this content we've got reviewed on the other channel and our weekly podcast as well. Um, check out our bookstore. helps to support the channel. You can check us on a Patreon for as little as a dollar. Stay on top of our upcoming um, Tainted Grail gameplay, Song of Ice and Fire miniature painting and tabletop gameplay, as well as our Joan of Arc campaigns and miniature painting as well. Uh, we've got some upcoming model builds. So go check out the webpage. Check out our links below. And thank you for liking and subscribing and clicking the bell to remind you to get the next episode of this. So let's jump right into day number seven. So we'll start with our orders of the day. We're gonna move our men here. He is down to three now. Time is running out for the men here. So we will spend a energy to move across to the grub wood. And in the grub wood it says, uh, explore when you enter the location. The explore, this exploration is free. And it says at the bottom of the card, it says, some think it was given this name because it, it, fed, it fed settlers in dire times. Others believe it's due to the maggots crawling over its slumping trees. So it's full of maggots and grubs. Sounds disgusting. So let's go check out the grub wood inside of the, uh, inside of our encounters journal. Our exploration journal. Uh, 108 is the grub wood. So on the grub wood it says, even in broad daylight the grub wood is not a good place to be. Its old trees bend towards each other like whispering hags. Old chains attached to treetops chime with every breeze. So you can see this in the in the photo here. There's some chains hanging from the trees. Um, the ground under them is foul and drenched in some strange substance. As you inspect it, it's, it is, you are startled by a hooded figure that watches you from behind the trees. Its frayed cape arches upward and its back is covered by a pair of wings. When the creature realizes you've spotted it, it runs away. Intrigued, you give chase, but after a while it disappears between the gnarly trees. Tired, you lean on one of the trunks, only to discover that it is crawling with fat white maggots. Remove this location card from the game and replace it with location 110. Okay, so let's find location 110. Interesting. It's the haunted grub wood now. So that's the grub wood. Let's replace it with the haunted grub wood now. Okay, so this exploration ends. Now we've got the haunted grub wood. So I can see that close up of the picture here with the chains hanging from the tree. We'll discard this one. Uh, so let's go, I'll just place them on the bottom of the deck here, just keep it clean. And uh, let's, we don't really have actions at this point, 
So I believe we can um, rest our day. So we can rest, we can consume one food. We don't have to really restore any health, although Bayor does lose one health from his wound. Uh, we can restore our energy from resting. And uh, we can advance our character by spending experience points. Let's go look into expending experience points because we each have an experience point. Let's see how to do experience. So I've never done that before. Experience, page 10. So you guys can leave a comment if you want to help me out on this one, but I'll just kind of read through it. And it says, Experience cost the raise. Raising the attributes are determined in separately for each of the three opposing ap attributes. This means, for example, the more points you have in blank, the more expansive your blank is. So, for example, um, the six basic attributes are in opposing pairs. They are used at different times. So it says, after you raise any attribute to two, every subsequent point of this attribute provides a special useful skill card next to the attribute. So how do I raise the... Well, I guess I'll do it next time. I'm going to read it off 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 um off play. That doesn't seem like a very good experience. Spent on raising your attributes and buying new increases. Okay, but how do we do it? Uh, does it is it like an advanced rule? Combat. Just one of those things that they upgraded in some other version that I don't have. Uh, I will go and, and find out about it and up, up, up update you guys later, but let's leave it at that. I won't do my experience upgrade right now, uh, but I will go into um, the uh, dream icon. There is a dream here. Is there not a dream? No. So we change it to this, but I guess I can still do the dream based on the card 110. So let's go to card 110, and we're going to end here. Or actually, can I, can I actually keep moving? Yeah, so I guess we can keep going on this day. It says, in, okay, no, I guess the encounter ends. So we have to, exploration ends means exploration is over. Does exploration ends means it's the end of the turn? Let me ask you guys that. Explore, page eight. Uh, start of the day, during the day, explore. Okay, it's when we run out of energy. So I guess we can keep going. Let's go one more step. Let's march one more into the warrior fair then. I guess we can march to the warrior fair then. Instead of stopping here, it says when everything has happened on the island. So combat trial. We can pay four energy to do um, an experience, or we can just explore. So let's go ahead and explore instead. We'll explore the Warrior Fair. Uh, that is 103. So it says, uh, The Sea of Tents bustles with the sound of combat and haggling, though you can't help but notice that even this festival has grown smaller since last year. It is a strange place. On one side, lords and rich men chant from all over the lands. On the other, young men trying to prove themselves in combat and earn a new contract or a rare lone warrior looking for a new master. Learn about the Kunak champions and their expedition. Take a, de a, a, a pay part in the great tournament. Explore the city of tents. If you don't have part one of the helping hands status, so we, do we have helping hands? Let's check. We don't have helping hands, okay? So leave, buy a contract, sell for profit. Let's just go learn about Canucks champions of the past. Uh, it doesn't take long before we meet some island inland merchants who saw a party like the one you're looking for on the road to the timber wall hold. Let's just see. The timber wall hold is here. So if we look at our map, we're in Connect, and they were going to the timber wall hold up here. But actually, here's Camelot over here. So we're kind of down here in this area now. The Warrior's Fair. Uh, it says, It appears the heroes of Kunak journeyed to find entry to the cursed ruins of the four-dweller capital, Tawothan, with plans to retrieve something of great value. Weird and troubling news. Maybe there's something else to learn. Search for more witnesses. Pay one energy per party member. We can do that. And go to verse 7. So let's go to verse 7. 
After a while, travelers' faces start to blur with one another. Approaching a new group, you find you no longer remember whether you are already talking to them or not. You're about to give up when you notice an old, hunched skull sitting in the mead tent. You join him and soon discover he might know something or he wants to cheat some drinking money out of you. Pay him one wealth, convince him to talk, requires two empathy. We have we don't have enough empathy. Let him be. So uh, we don't have enough. We, oh, we actually, we can pay one wealth. Let's pay one wealth. We pay him one wealth, and uh, you pay him one wealth. Go to verse six. The scald meets the heroes of Kunakt a week ago, just south of Farshire. They were only three of them left, tired and wounded, shocked by Lord Yavin's death. Oh, wow, Lord Yavin's death. The skull's face goes gray as he mentions a creature chasing them, an apparition bearing a pale three-eyed mask of a four-dweller. New task. It seems you have to hurry and find the group before it's too late. Gain part six of the fate of the expedition status and exploration ends. So we're going to gain part six of the expedition status, and then we're going to end that. So I'll mark that on the card. And I think that's going to wrap us up for the end of the day. Uh, do we have a dream here? No, there's no dream in, in this one. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. And we will see you guys in round number seven for day number eight. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.